from the historic Loretto Abbey Chapel. With the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents The Daily TV Mass. Welcome to the celebration of the Daily TV Mass. I'm Father Dan Donovan. The televising of this Mass is made possible by the contribution from an anonymous donor from California. This Mass is offered for the conversion of sinners and for the intentions of his family. Our thanks to our donor for the gift of the televising of this Mass to the faithful of Canada, the USA, and around the world. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Today we commemorate Saint Marguerite Duville, the first Canadian born saint. She and her companions founded the Sisters of Charity, popularly known as the Grey Nuns, in order to extend her work on behalf of the sick and the poor. Let us now acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. God of mercy and compassion who led Saint Marguerite Duville to embrace the way of the cross and to devote her ardent love to assist the needy of her day. Make us bold like her, we pray, so that we may imitate your own compassion and have the strength to persevere until the day you call us to share the joy of your saints. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. From Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, set apart for the gospel of God, which he promised beforehand through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures. The gospel concerning his son, who was descended from David according to the flesh and was declared to be Son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by resurrection from the dead, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through Christ we have received grace and apostleship to bring about the obedience of faith among all the Gentiles for the sake of his name, including yourselves, who are called to belong to Jesus Christ. To all God's beloved in Rome, who are called to be saints, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks.
victory of our God. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Break forth into joyous song and sing praises. The Lord has made known his salvation. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, o Lord. When the crowds were increasing, Jesus began to say, This generation is an evil generation. It asks for a sign, but no sign will be given to it except the sign of Jonah. For just as Jonah became a sign to the people of Nineveh, so the Son of Man will be to this generation. The queen of the south will rise at the judgment with the people of this generation and condemn them because she came from the ends of the earth to listen to the wisdom of Solomon and see something greater than Solomon is here. The people of Nineveh will rise up at the judgment with this generation and condemn it because they repented at the proclamation of Jonah and see something greater than Jonah is here. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. For most of this week and of the following three weeks, the first reading of daily Mass is taken from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. It is the longest and in many ways the most profound and the most influential of his writings. Romans has had an enormous impact over the centuries on both Catholics and Protestants. It has, among other things, deeply influenced the development of our understanding of grace. In the New Testament, the word grace suggests a gift, something which we cannot earn for ourselves or which we are called to accept as a gift from God through Christ. We are justified, as Paul likes to say, not by works, that is, not by what we do, but by what God does in and for us. To be justified is to be made holy. It's to become friends of God. It is the result not of anything that we might do on our own, but of God's gift and our response to it in faith. As important as faith is, Paul says, that it becomes operative, active in the world through love. Faith and love are the two defining virtues of a Christian life. Today's reading contains the first seven verses of the letter to the Romans. They follow a format that was common in the ancient world. The writer begins by including him or herself mentions the names of the person or persons to whom the letter is addressed, and offers an initial greeting. Paul follows this pattern, but fills it with Christian ideas and convictions. He introduces himself as a servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, set apart for the gospel of God. The word called comes back three times in the reading. Paul, as well as believers in Rome, have been called into a new relationship with and by God. Our coming to faith 
has been the result not of our initiative, but of God's graciousness toward us. He calls us into relationship with him and with Christ, calls us to be disciples of Jesus and members of the community of faith, the church. It is God's call that has made Paul an apostle and more fundamentally a servant of Jesus Christ, someone who in a special way belongs to Christ. For Paul, the vocation to be a Christian implies the dedication of one's whole life of being to being a follower of Jesus. In his case, the vocation is inseparable from his call to be an apostle, to bring about, as he puts it, the obedience of faith among the Gentiles. Like Paul, all who come to faith in the gospel and in what God has done for us in Jesus have begun to live a new life. Whatever particular vocation we might have, the primary vocation to which we as believers are all called is to belong to Jesus Christ. Paul describes himself as someone who is set apart, set apart for the gospel of God, someone whose whole life will be about proclaiming the good news of salvation of and about Christ. The focus of most Christians in the past and today is on the world, their family and work, their contribution to the building up of society and of the world in which we live and for which we all have a responsibility. Paul has been set apart from all of that, set apart in the sense that he's been called to dedicate his entire life to proclaiming the gospel, the good news of and about God and about what he has done and continues to do for us in Christ. The gospel, Paul says, is summed up in the person of Jesus. He is simultaneously the Son of God and the heir of King David, on whom the messianic hopes of so many were focused. What was true from the beginning of the life of Jesus has now become visible in a new way through his resurrection. The good news at the heart of Christianity is about the person, life, and above all, the death and resurrection of Jesus. Towards the end of today's reading, Paul returns to its first verses. Through those in Rome and beyond who have come to faith in Christ, he says of himself, the call involved in is only the beginning. They and all Christians are called to be saints called to grow in faith and love and in a way of life that reflects the life teaching of Jesus. One does not become a saint simply by one's own willpower or by one's discipline, by what we are able to do on our own. It flows from a combination of God's gifts and of our cooperation with them. Paul describes those to whom he is writing as God's beloved in Rome. The community there is made up of Jews and Gentiles, slaves and free, women and men. In fact, of everyone who has heard the good news from and about God and what he has done for us in Christ and embraced it in faith. All are baptized, Paul says. All are called to be saints. To be a saint in a Christian sense of the word is to be open to and to be touched by God and by his love. He alone is truly holy, holy in the very depths of his being. We are made holy through sharing in his life. What that implies involves a way of being, a way of being that reflects something of the life and teaching of Jesus. At the same time, openness to God and to his gifts requires on our part humility, an awareness of ourselves, our limits, and our need for God's healing and strengthening gift. The last line of the reading reflects Paul's awareness of that. Grace to you, he says, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace and peace is the form of greeting with which Paul begins almost all his letters. Grace or gift is ultimately, as I've said, a sharing 
in God's own life. He gives himself to us so that we might give ourselves to him and to one another. The first fruit of grace is peace. Sometimes, although we sometimes think that peace begins with our efforts, it begins, in fact, with God and with his presence in our hearts. The word peace comes back seven times in the period of the Mass between the end of the Our Father and our receiving of communion. We pray that we will have peace, and in doing so, we recall the saying of Jesus, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. We give visible and tangible form to our prayer by responding to the priest's invitation to give a sign of our desire to share the peace of Christ with one another. To be aware of what we are saying, what we are doing with the sign of peace, should bring home to us how precious peace is and that it is something for which we ought to work and above all, pray. Let us now in faith and trust present before God our needs. For all those in our daily TV Mass intentions book, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. During this season of Thanksgiving, we thank God for all the blessings we have been given and ask for continued blessings on ourselves, our neighbors, and our world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the success of the current meeting in Rome of those involved in the Synod of Bishops, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and the chronically ill, that they will be given the courage and trust they need to deal with their condition, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For victims of war and of all forms of violence, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gracious God, we ask you to hear and grant these prayers as well as the more personal ones that each one of us has in his or her own heart. All this we pray through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. of his divinity, became partaker of our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed, Blessed be God forever. Gracious God, we ask you. Wash me from my sins. Cleanse me from Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be made acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of the Lord. Accept the offering of your church, O Lord, on this memorial of St. Marguerite, and from it grant us the wisdom and strength for the work of serving our neighbor in unity and in joy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Come up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you are praised in the company of your saints, and in crowning their merits, you crown your own gifts. By their way of life, you offer us an example. By communion with them, you give us companionship. By their intercession, sure support. So that encouraged by so great a cloud of witnesses, 
we may run as victors in that race before us and win with them the imperishable crown of glory through Christ our Lord. And so with the angels and archangels and with the great multitude of the saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the night he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Francis, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. 
as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom of power, the glory is yours. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not upon our sins, but upon the faith of your church, and grant her the peace and unity of that kingdom where you live forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Please join me now in this act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my heart, as though you were already there. I embrace you and unite myself wholly to you, Permit not that I should ever be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, that the sacrament of which we have to partaken may lead us to show your kindness and your compassion to all and prepare us for the joys of the eternal banquet. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Our thanks to our donor for the gift of this Mass. We gather each